Hey everybody, it's Nick Dolman here and what I'm providing to you is a just a simple walkthrough of the Microsoft Learn module or you might be getting this as part of a delivery from a partner called Power Pages in a Day or you might be a trainer that you're ramping up to deliver this to your end customers or to your user group or whatever. So I just thought it might be a little bit helpful for me to walk through the labs themselves. The labs are actually pretty well, very clearly laid out in the downloadable material if you're delivering Power Pages in a day or through the Microsoft Learn module. However, I just thought, you know, sometimes it's good to see somebody go through all the steps and, you know, kind of where where I'm selecting things, clicking things and adding things. So I've created a whole series of walkthrough videos and that's strictly what it is. This isn't meant to replace any of the existing training. It's just meant to be a guide. Or if you're doing more advanced training, you just need to be quickly ramped up on Power Pages. You could just sit back and watch this to get the gist of things. Use this however you want to use this. I'm doing this for fun um, and some of the other training I'm doing um, and more of the advanced developer stuff, I thought maybe provide something to kind of help people get to that, get past the hello world and be ready for further training. Anyways, I hope you enjoy these series of videos and I do hope you find them helpful. So the very first thing that you're going to need is an environment, a developer environment in which to create a Power Pages site in order to go through these exercises. Now you don't want to do this on your production site. Please, please do not do it on your production. Um, if your organization allows you as a maker to create developer environments, that's great. If not, there are other options out there are you could set up a trial. Um, those are pretty easy, a Microsoft 365 trial or you could set up a developer environment as well or a developer tenant. And once you have that, you can create developer environments. Um, and then once you have that, if you aren't using your own company's infrastructure, then I would highly recommend that you set up a browser profile for the particular environment that you're creating for these labs. Um, you can do this in Edge and Chrome and Firefox and just set up a new browser profile. There's a lot of good resources out there how to do that. Once you have that set up and you're logged into that particular browser, let's go in and create our Power Pages site. Now there's a couple different ways that this is going to happen. The first one, um, what I'll just have you do is just go to aka.ms slash MPP, which is make Power Pages. And this is going to take you to, first off, it's gonna ask you to log in if you've not already done so. And again, this is why it's important to have your own browser profile so you're not conflicting with your own work or school environment. So I've set up a developer environment for mine. So I have a user here. I put their credentials in. And of course, the password. Um, it's gonna ask me to save the password depending on what browser you're using. Yeah, let's do that. And sure, we're going to stay signed in because again, this uh, browser profile doesn't have any other um, links to any other Microsoft tenants. Now, the very first thing, this is going to, this is what we call the first run experience. So if this particular user has never logged in to um, Microsoft Power Platform before or created Power Pages site, this is the first experience you'll see. If you have created a Power Pages site before, it's going to take you directly to the Power Pages homepage. And we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. So first thing, we'll just select get started. And this will sort of check to make sure that this particular user has the ability to create a new developer environment, as well as the ability to create a Power Pages site. If everything goes according to plan, you should be presented with a list of three questions. Let's just increase the resolution a little bit so you're able to see this. Let's go to 125, that sounds good. And there are three questions here. As of today, um, these questions don't really uh, do anything. Eventually, they may um, alter the experience a little bit, but we can pick whatever you want. Um, and then now we have our templates. So there's different templates you can pick here. Um, specifically for the Power Pages in a day, it really doesn't matter. Um, I would 
I would pick one of the starter layouts. I'm just going to pick the uh, the second one here. I can choose this template. There are other ones here for program registration, schedule manage meetings, FAQ, application processing. Um, and if you are using Dynamics 365, you can actually use some of those templates as well. Again, I'm assuming you're just a beginner and you're just going through this on a walkthrough. Let's just choose the second template. And then basically you need to give your site a name. You can call it whatever you want. We also need a web address. This will generate one for you. This needs to be unique. Um, so if there is something that you want to put in and it doesn't allow you to it because it could be because someone else chose it already in the in a real project you can change the web address to your own custom domain and of course picking a language whatever language that you're working in um, power pages supports i believe 42 or 44 different languages i'm just going to keep it at english united states and keep the defaults i'm going to select done and now what this is going to do, this is going to set up the new site. This is going to do a series of, of things. It's going to um, create that developer environment. And then it's also going to load solutions into that developer environment and load uh, metadata. So after a few moments, you're going to be presented with uh, what we call the design studio. And it's going to show you a bit of a walkthrough. Um, you'll see the you know where you can view your edit your pages in what we call the pages workspace. Then it's going to you know, talk a little bit of working on the pages canvas about adding, editing new sections. And then of course, talking about the styling workspace, which would be the first thing that we're actually going to be exploring as we go through the Power Pages in a day um, labs. And then finally, it's gonna talk a little bit about the data workspace, which again, that we'll cover as part of these labs as I do the walkthrough as well. And then finally, when everything's said and done, how you can preview your site or your PC and your mobile device by hitting that preview. And we can just hit preview right now because the cool thing about Power Pages is whereas for a model-driven app or a Canvas app where you're starting strictly from a blank, blank template, in Power Pages with these Power Pages templates, there actually are working websites. There's not a lot of configuration done yet, but at least you can actually browse and view that particular website. So let's just hit preview. And I'm just going to choose desktop. Now you may be presented the very first time you spin up your site with this permissions requested. And that's fine. That's a normal thing that just makes sure that, you know, the website itself is allowed to talk to your Dataverse instance. So here you go. After a few moments, you actually see you have your Power Pages site up. You have our homepage. You have a sign in button. You have a search. You have uh, some sample pages here that you can take a look at. So really, this is. This is the, the very first step in creating a Power Pages site. You've created one, you've got one spun up. But now let's go through, do the walkthrough of the Power Pages in a day labs so you can actually go through that and see that entire process.